USDC and USDL and all the stuff on the pulse chain right now? Well, I think people learn a really valuable lesson very quickly that this is not a free ride. And their participate, the participation in their protocols show it. You can look at their, their websites and how many vaults are open and stuff uh, compared to what they were. And people realize that this is not, um, it wasn't a free lunch, so to speak. You are taking a loan. Your assets are at risk. It's a loan. Though you don't have to pay it back, you can't pay any interest, you still put your assets at risk. I just, for whatever reason, after all the things that were said, that people realized that, did not realize that they were going to be, you know, redeemed against so so often with the arbitrage arbitrage opportunities. And to be fair, there was never really a big narrative, though it was always a fact. Um, but it's also assumed that we were all be going up right now, not going down as much for a long time. So. You know that's that plays into the, the understanding of how the protocols function, which are functioning as are as designed, um, at least to a certain point. So I don't I don't see that um, uh, the the lending concept is is as a uh, I, I guess it's not all as cracked up to be as people see how the nuts and bolts work. So therefore, people have to really take take stock of why they want to go loan, have a plan before they they take a loan out. Uh, and interact with these contracts. Because what are you going to do with the money? If you if the price is going to go down, you can get liquidated. If the price goes up too fast, you could possibly get redeemed. Though you get some like, your stuff back. Don't get me wrong; it's still not an ideal situation if you want to hold your assets uh, or at least value your assets. And so, I think people have learned, and as they see the things move, that these tools are there to be t used wisely how they're supposed to be used. Uh, so it's not going to be a get rich quick kind of, you know, you know, 10,000 APR type, you know, farm or anything like that. That's not, that's not how they're designed. I, d I just hope that, I mean, I hope people have learned the right lesson on this and I hope it doesn't cause people just not to use the protocols at all. I think that's the delicate balance of like, mm -hmm. how can an average person, you know, we've been talking about liquid loans in power city for, for like two years now, right? All the, went through all the mechanics. You've did videos. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had them on, I've had people on the show a million times talk about it too. It feels like we're not going to be able to learn that much more about the protocols themselves. Like we, I think most people get the ideal. They understand somewhat about liquidations, maybe not so much redemptions part, but the whole like, you know, never selling a very popular ideal, very like just, Oh, common sense. Why wouldn't you do that sort of deal? I don't, I'm not sure people are going to be able to understand much more. I'm just, I'm just speaking on behalf of like the common crypto person who's in the community, who's like, Hey, there's this tool. Maybe I sacked for it. Maybe I didn't. Um, but I keep hearing people use it. It's supposed to be great. I don't know if they're going to learn that much more about the mechanic side. I think they just want to use the tool if it's not going to, you know, not lose their money. The protocol is not going to lose the money, but they're not going to lose their money using the tool because of the liquidation or redemption or otherwise. How, how does, how do we strike that balance? How do we get people to feel safe using the tools? And then also not have to be like this, you know, protocol DeFi nerd in order to use it properly. Because if, if everyone has to be a nerd to use it, that's going to be 1% of the entire community. Like the, the it's going to fall off a cliff if everyone has to be like this master using it. How do we make them feel safe using it and not have to know it, the ins and outs of every single thing? Or can we do that? Mm, I don't I don't think it's I, I really don't think these tools are for the novice. First of all, these are people who know what they're doing. They're taking calculated risk to use the tools. That's who needs to use these tools. Now, if we go do a 10x in the next six months, these tools will have, will have a lot more use case because then if we're in an upward trend for a while, you can put your money in, borrow against it, buy more, and, and do these type of you know rebuilding strategies um, <clears throat> to increase your positions. Uh, so I think that's that's the main use case really for them because in a downward market, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some arbitrage opportunities and some plays you can do. Uh, with redemptions and stuff like that, and you know, taking full out loans as the price goes down, get 10x more or 10 percent more, and all these things. Again, that's for advanced users and people who want to play the game and take those risks. Um, but really, for the average user, this is something they can use on the upswing when the market gets back up and to the right. Then they can use them with with less risk of uh, liquidations and, uh, and stuff like that. Now, redemptions always happen just because of arbitrage, arbitrage opportunities. You can't help that. That's just part of the mechanics of how they, both these things work. But I would say for the average user who doesn't understand, just just don't don't participate. If you want to do anything, get your stable coin, mark a bond, stick them in the, in the stability pool, and earn some earn some fees that way. If that's what you want to do with your money, you know. 
but taking a loan is, is, is it's always it has risk period you know yeah i i think that maybe i guess the optimistic way to paint this is okay we've had a lot of volatility and i mean there's been other things too like uh, people weren't expecting to get liquidated at higher percentage ratios you know certain things that were like popularized or otherwise you know expected to be safe maybe they shouldn't have been expected but you know they were for a lot of people to be safe did not get liquidated for you know that didn't, didn't work out for for a percentage of people as well it almost feels like it's it's like a you know like a like a well tool at this point like bar and lending is almost for hey you you better be in that one percent of people who really understand these DeFi protocols and and borrowing and stuff or you just you know uh you are one of the ta guys who who just wants to time the market and you have plenty of capital put in and you know, maybe you're not worried about losing it as much but I, I think restoring i don't know what do you think we just need a run up we need like the you know bull market for pulse chain at least to to be consistent before a lot of people will come back and be like oh loans that's just something everyone you know everyone does not everyone does so you know what i'm saying like easy to easy to get into instead of now it's like oh i'm not i'm not sure if i want to risk you know I, i'm not sure if i want to risk liquidation because what if the market goes down again that kind of thing well i mean again why people ask themselves the question why are you taking a lot up in the first place why are you putting a potentially good appreciating asset up for up for collateral to take stable coins out what's the what's the plan what are you going to do where can you earn more in apy than the, the price appreciation of, of the asset that's that's really what it boils down to Unless you just don't want to get out and go buy yourself a car. Besides that, if you're just in DeFi to be DeFi, why are you, get to, why are you getting stable coins anyway? Where can you put those stable coins to work to give you higher APY than the appreciation that's coming? You know, are you going to 2X your money if, if the price 2Xs? You know, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know what the answer is, but that's the re that's the question they must, must ask themselves before they interact with these type of products. You know, I mean, look at liquidity right now on Ethereum. Look at their numbers and see what's happening there and how popular it is in the beginning of a bull run on Ethereum. What do those numbers tell you? That's been around for two or three years now. How many people are using that product? Who's who's using it? Who's using it? Who's utilizing it? And what's their what's their price look like? What does their little token look like? It's it changed a whole lot, to be honest with you. And why is that? I mean, though it held up well when the depegging happening of USDC it held up great because it did its job because that's how it works. But for whatever reason, it's not getting the traction like, you know, we have, I think we got more users over on, on Pulse Chain than they have in Liquidity in right now. But they're very similar in their performance and overall. So that's just something that you need to think about. Um, why? Because why are you taking a loan out against Ethereum? What are you going to go buy? You know, PulseChain.com. There you go. All right. Or, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those. Yeah, I, I think that the situation we want to avoid as much as possible is, you know, people you know, having bad experiences, right? I think that's, to me, I'm always thinking about, man, how can we, how can we talk about things that get people excited, but also, you know, let them know, it's not even let them know about the risk, but, but try to get them in a frame of mind to understand whether this product actually works for them or not. Like you said, what are you going to do with it? You're going to take a loan, what are you going to do with it? That sort of thing. You'll, you're going to do a little arbitrage. Okay. Do you understand if those prices go up and down? What can happen? You know, are you going to just going to stake the? I mean, I think a lot of people just want to get yield, right? There's like, hey, I just want to stake the loan token, or I want to stake the you know PXDC or whatever, and I just want to earn yeah. earn fees. But then, if you know, if I get liquidated or redeemed on, I'm going to stop fees fees not go anymore. That kind of thing. So, how to avoid like how to get excited about the product, how to use it, and like actually solve problems for people or not, or be like, hey, this is not something I'm interested in, but like. Yeah, I think that's a delicate balance and I hope we get back to it.